How you doing everybody? Hey, I was sitting here building, uh, finishing up this uh, brake drum forge and I built a few handles out of wood <clears throat> and mounted them on here and I wanted to show you how I built the uh, handles which is pretty cool. I mean they look nice on there and they work good. So I, I'll give you a little closer look at uh, okay, what I'm this building. is the uh, handle for the damper uh, that lifts the damper up and down. Uh, as you can see it almost looks like glass. They, they actually look pretty cool. And I have one down here on the uh, ash for our ashes, for our ash pit. I put one on there. Now, I have one. I'm, going, I'm building another one for right here for the clinker breaker. And I figured I'd show you until I did that. So, we don't need no grate in here. That clinker breaker works good. So, I'll get, the, get on that one there and I'll show All you right, how I'm well building. I did. I went out in the woods, I took a little coping saw or a little saw and I cut off a couple old uh, branches. Now these are maple and it doesn't really matter if they're maple, oak, sassy fresh, black walnut, whatever you want to use is fine. It's not like it's, I mean, it ain't got to be perfect as long as it's pretty. And what I did is I stripped all the bark off of it. And then when I stripped the bark off of it, it looks like this. And what I did is I'm trying to round off these uh, edges here. I want to round them all off. This is going to be for the clinker breaker. And we're going to sand this down until we get it all the way down to uh, real pretty wood and nice and smooth. And then we'll start uh, the other process. <laughs> do here is just get the heavy stuff off. Try to get all the heavy off. Try to round our edges. We're, taking an old, uh, we're going to take an old uh, wood grasp and we're going to try to get these a little bit rounder on the end. We want it to look like it's been setting around a long time. Maybe rolling well, it's like a river. Now you get that driftwood. I don't want no sharp edges. I drilled the hole in this thing first. And the reason why is because if I would have came out the side or something would have messed up, the wood would have split. I would have just drove it away. I wouldn't even have stripped the bark off of it. So I always drill my hole first. Drill the hole first and then you know whether you're going to use that piece of wood or not. Don't uh, get the wood night looking nice and then go drilling your hole and then something happens. You're stuck doing all that work and piece of junk wood. What we're going to do now is we're going to sit down here and we're going to sand this thing. So we get it real nice and smooth. We want to try to get all the uh, remnants of that bark and you can see it. It's kind of brown. It's on there. It's got a little brown tint to it. You can see it. I want to try to get all that brown off of there. So. We'll just work on getting that brown off of there. It'll take a little bit, but you, you can see they make real pretty little handles. We got it all sanded down real nice. I just put it on a little bolt here so we could get it to uh, put our uh, clear coat on it. Now what I'll do is I'll take the uh, torch and I'll heat it up a little bit with the torch and just kind of bring out some of the grain on it. And that'll make all the grain stand out on it. Now that we got it, uh, we burnt it a little bit, what I'm going to do is take some real fine paper, it's 220 paper, and we're going to just scuff over it so we don't have any dark 
real dark heavy spots. Okay, after we got it all sanded, we'll dust it off a little bit, get a little bit of that anything that might be on there that don't look right. Okay, I use a, it's a polyurethane. I don't put any stain on it or nothing, it's just a natural wood. I got a can of this polyurethane and I'll put several coats of this uh, polyurethane on there and I'll use a uh, little sponge brush, which works pretty good. Alright, what I'm going to do is pick it up and I'll do this bottom piece first. And this is going to soak in. A lot of this is going to soak in. But this is actually going to be the top of the handle, so I want this to look pretty good. So I'll just slide it down on there. We'll get us a coat of this on there. You can see it'll turn out really nice. And the more coat you put on it, the shinier this thing will get. And in between the coats, I'll use a steel bowl. And we'll kind of sand it with steel wool in between each coat. Man, that is some pretty wood. And that's just old dead maple out in the woods. Definitely dry. Good dry wood. The tops of these will take the most because it'll soak in real good. It'll it'll keep soaking in in that grain. But we'll make us some nice handles out of this. Keep trying to get to soak in that tip there. Okay, that's the first coat. Looks good. Now what we'll do is we'll uh, let that dry up and then we'll scuff it off with some steel wool and we'll coat her again and again and again. I'll probably put about four coats on there. Well, we got the first coat on there and it's been quite a few hours. It's good and dry. So if we're going to scuff it off. We use to take all the shine off of it. We don't want no shine on this. We're going to scuff it all down and then we'll uh, put us a second coat on here. I'll probably do about four coats, maybe five. Depends on how shiny I want it. And the more coats I put on it, the deeper shine it has. So, and I was amazed at how shiny it'll get. And I'm just using a real fine steel wool. Okay, this is our second coat. Each coat we put on there, the shinier it'll get. These tops here, they seem like they uh, absorb the most when we're putting it on there. We better do the underneath of this first. Because I'll get to where I can't see it. And I want that to look good under there. Now every coat that I put on there, when I'm done, I take my uh, little sponge thing here, a little sponge brush. And I wrap it up in some plastic. And I kind of wrap it real tight. As long as I keep the air off of that, I can reuse that brush. And I'll just set her down. As you can see, our second coat looks a little better. And the third and the fourth one is even going to look better than that. So, But it'll keep getting heavier and heavier. It'll start looking like glass on there, actually. It's early in the morning, we figured we'd get out here and get a coat of clear on this and then when I got home from work I could finish it up. That'll be four coats at least. It'll be one good looking handle.
Okay, one more coat. We'll sand her down when we get home. We'll scuff her up good and we'll put one more coat on her. And it should look like a glass handle. And we'll get her glued on. All right. I'm going to get her last coat put on here. We're going to scuff this down. I think four will be fine. It's looking really nice. Okay, we're on our fourth coat. We dusted it off with some real fine steel wool. And I think this will be the last coat that I'll need on this. It's looking pretty good. It's going to be a nice shiny handle. Get a good nice heavy coat on here. We don't want it to run, but we want to be a nice good heavy coat on it. It's pretty cool when you can take an old piece of wood like this and make it look like something like this. That's a nice looking handle. But basically this is what that looked like just not too long ago. So this is going to be another handle for our brake drum forge. So we're going to go ahead and put that uh, handle on. Okay, this uh, handle is going to be for our clinker breaker for this little brake drum forge. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some water and I'm going to squeeze some water down in that uh, hole there if I get it to go down in there. A little bit of water down in there. A little bit of water. And then we're going to knock the water out of it. We don't want to leave the water in there. We're just going to dampen the sides of that. Then what we're going to do is take our Gorilla Glue here. We're going to put a little bit down inside. This a little bit because this thing will actually swell up. This Gorilla Glue swells up. So we'll put a little bit down in there. It's good there. Then we'll put a now if you notice I got some notches. I ground some notches in this uh, thing here. In that metal. That way when that glue swells up, it'll have something to go in to hold it on. So then we're gonna just take our handle. Get her squeezed up on there, nice and tight. Then we're gonna wipe our old glue off. Any glue that's on there, we're gonna wipe it all off, clean it up. Okay, as you can see, here's our handle, and inside there's our clinker breaker, and it works pretty good. It's gonna work good. But as long as your handle's pointing down, you know your clinker breaker's pointing down. So that's the handles for my brake drum forge. And I had made three of them for this forge, and they actually look like glass. They're pretty cool. I don't think uh, the heat's going to bother them a bit, because most of the heat's going to go up. And this all should be stay pretty cool. And you got your other one there. And then you get another one down there. Hey, I hope you guys enjoyed the uh, handles we made for the brake drum forge. They turned out really nice. And uh, I want to tell everybody thanks for watching my video. And uh, don't forget to subscribe or leave me thumbs up or thumbs down. I think this forge is just about done. I got a couple little things to do to it, but uh, it's definitely a good looking forge.